fascinating report. There's a lot in there. I, I wonder, is the view from the White House more about sustained strength in job growth or signs that uh, wage growth, for example, is moderating? Well, look, this report reflects the historic gains we've made as we've recovered from the pandemic recession in the labor market. We see, we've seen this continues the employment growth. And what we learned, as you noted, was that the, the economy added 372,000 jobs, 381,000 jobs in the private sector, such that now the private sector em employment is actually just above where it was in February of 2020 when the recession began. So this report reflects that there are employment opportunities that are rather broadly based. Unemployment remains at 3.6 percent. Uh, and we, while there was a tick down in labor force participation, that, no, that is a number that does bounce from month to month. And if you look overall over the, past, over the past year, we've seen historic gains in labor force participation as well. So this report reflects that our labor market remains strong despite the challenges and headwinds. And it reflects that the U.S. economy has got some, some room to, to face the challenges uh, by, as the Fed negotiates inflation and as we deal with the war of Russia against Ukraine. You mentioned participation, uh, and there is some noise in there, but I wonder, to the degree that there is something going on in the downtick, do you think it's about lingering COVID concerns, or is it about the sustainability of excess savings and the, the, not necessarily the need to go out and, and look for work? What's going on, do you think? Well, again, these numbers are noisy from month to month, and this fluctuation is not unusual uh, month to month in the labor, in the labor survey. Um, but, you know, we did see a tick up in the number of people who reported that they were not in the labor force due to COVID um, or that they, were not, that they were not at work due to COVID. And so we know that the, with the BA.4 and BA.5 that COVID is still with us. Uh, but fundamentally, what we saw in this report is that we are learning to live alongside COVID and that our labor force uh, and our eco labor economy continues to make historic gains. Chair Rouse, I'm curious, given the backdrop of this unemployment picture, uh, are you surprised that consumer sentiment is at a record low right now? And obviously, there's the inflation backdrop that's playing a huge role in this. But what does that tell you about just the, the state of the economy and Americans' willingness to go out and spend? Well, we know that Americans are, are continuing to spend. Yes, there was a, a slight decline in, in retail sales, but overall, we know that con, uh, consumption and expenditures remain rather robust. Uh, you know, quite frankly, I, I suspect that the sentiment numbers reflect that we've had two really hard years. This pandemic has been a struggle and a challenge both personally for many people uh, in terms of the health uh, emergency and the pandemic and then the, the effects that that had on the labor market and employment. And now what we have is the knock on of inflation, which we know is a challenge for households, which is why the president is focused on reducing uh, costs for families uh, it, through prescription costs, child care costs, uh, focused on reducing the deficit, which we know helps with inflation as well um, and prices. And so, you know, I think that it's been, I think it's been a really hard two years. But what this report reminds us is that we have a resilient economy, that the labor force and uh, our employers are continuing to add jobs, and that there are opportunities out there across a variety of industries. You know, even leisure and hospitality, which still needs to, to see some recovery, is still gaining jobs, as you, as you noted. So, uh, you know, this report reflects that we have the bones are, are, are relatively good there in our economy and that it's, it's got the resilience to, to, for the challenges that we know are, are we're going to be facing ahead. Uh, well, Chair Rouse, you, you did mention, um, you know, the president's focus on inflation. He has uh, essentially acknowledged the Fed's primary role in trying to restrain inflation, given the fact that, you know, the Fed and Fed officials have essentially acknowledged that that effort might involve and might likely involve softening up uh, consumer demand, perhaps uh, dealing with higher um, uh, unemployment over the course of the next several quarters. How does the White House view that as the, the, the possibility that, in fact, the economy uh, might actually uh, have to have some kind of a downturn in order to achieve what's necessary on inflation? Well, what, we, what the Fed hopes and what we certainly hope is that the Fed is able to achieve price stability and bring down inflation while maintaining maximum employment as well. Um, and again, the robust uh, labor market we see with the reports like this, uh, the robust growth we had last year suggests that there is some room uh, for the Fed to maneuver. The president's goal is that we make a transition to steady, sustainable growth. 
uh, where we have wage gains that are due to productivity. Um, and he understands that that involves bringing under inflation under control. And so that is why he's give, he wants to give the Fed the room that they need and the independence that they need to bring inflation under control while continuing to make the kinds of investments we know we need to be making in order to increase economic capacity in our, in our economy. That's why he's focused on, again, reducing prices for American people, uh, making the investments we know we need to be making as we transition to clean energy. Uh, that's why the bipartisan infrastructure law is so important, allowing us to make the kinds of investments in physical infrastructure that are so overdue in our economy. And it is why we need to be increasing taxes for the very wealthiest individuals and for corporations so that we can pay for these kinds of investments responsibly. So we, are, we have our eye on that transition to a steady, uh, stable economic growth because we know that that's the kind of growth that will sustain us and that can be more widely shared.